The Fraudulent Trial Against Chevron in Ecuador, 2003-2011 to The plaintiff's legal team, having just succeeded in getting the judge in the case to stop the independent team of experts from continuing inspections of well sites, focused on one man to continue their scheme. After meeting privately with him at Hotel Quito and a Quito-area restaurant, plaintiffs hired this man, Richard Stalin Cabrera Vega, an Ecuadorian geologist, to pose as the court's independent expert. Donziger handpicked Cabrera because he was the perfect foil for Chevron. Before Cabrera's prearranged appointment by the court took place, the plaintiff's lawyers and consultants held a secret meeting with Cabrera to plan their control of his work. A crew filming footage for the movie Crude captured much of the March 3, 2007 meeting on camera, including scenes in which the plaintiff's team boasted that they would do Cabrera's work for him and that Chevron would not be allowed to participate. Para que todos aportemos ese informe, o sea, vean, la carga no va a ser del perito, la carga la llevamos entre todos y queremos el compromiso de todos para este proceso. Tiene una pregunta, el informe final, ella dice, el informe final va a estar elaborado solamente por el perito. Bueno, no, 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 el perito lo que va a hacer es dar su criterio ¿sí? y firmar el informe y revisarlo ante la pero nosotros entre todos tenemos que aportar en ese informe. The plaintiff's lawyers didn't stop there. Even before Cabrera's appointment, their legal and technical teams secretly began their preparations to write Cabrera's work plans and reports. Plaintiff's lawyer Pablo Fajardo circulated a plan that assigned tasks to specific individuals, such as select sites for expert examination study, configure database for laboratory results, create expert reports, and deliver report to the court. With their preparations well underway, Fajardo reported on another private meeting with Judge Yanes, who they referred to by the code name The Boss. Today I met with the boss. Next Monday or Tuesday, he will issue the order that the expert be notified of his appointment. There is no turning back. He will ratify Richard and everything that's been ordered. On June 13, 2007, Cabrera was officially sworn in as the court's global damages expert. Danziger celebrated Cabrera's installation as the court expert as a huge victory that would end the trial. At Cabrera's public appointment, the Lago Agrio court ordered him to perform his duties with complete impartiality and independence vis-à-vis the parties. Yet that same day, Danziger arranged to have a secret bank account opened to pay bribes and hush money to Cabrera, who the plaintiff's lawyers referred to by the codename WOW. Danziger then arranged to have Joe Cohn transfer $100,000 to the secret account once Cabrera's work was underway. And does that refresh your recollection that pursuant to your email request of August 14, 2007, that $50,000 be deposited into the Frente's secret account, Joe Cohn did in fact make that deposit? He made a deposit in the second account, yes. But on September 14, 2007, $50,000 was again transferred to the Frente de Defensa de la Amazonia. Do you see that? Yes. Plaintiff's lawyers also gave Cabrera an office and an assistant who was a girlfriend of one of the plaintiff's lawyers to keep him under control. They wrote in internal emails, I think that today you could help Richard Cabrera in Quito. He called me this morning about a little mistake in the contract. He seemed a bit upset. About the contract, I already fixed it. We help him get an office. I recommend that Julio's girlfriend be his assistant. We'd have this situation more or less controlled. 
Cabrera's first act as the court's independent expert was to file a work plan drafted by plaintiffs. At the time that plaintiffs provided Cabrera with a draft work plan, it's true, isn't it, that Cabrera was under an order from the Ecuadorian court to act independent from the parties? I believe so, yes. The work plan that plaintiffs drafted for Cabrera did not indicate it on it anywhere that it had been drafted by the plaintiffs, correct? That's correct. Despite the secret agreements and his filing of plaintiffs' work as his own, Cabrera emphatically stated his independence before the Ecuadorian court. I should clarify that I do not have any relation or agreements with the plaintiff, and it seems to me to be an insult against me that I should be linked with the attorneys of the plaintiffs. Forensic evidence now shows that statements by Cabrera claiming his independence were written by plaintiff's lawyer Pablo Fajardo. While having Cabrera pose as the court's independent expert, Donziger and Cohn hired U.S. contractors at Stratus Consulting to secretly draft Cabrera's report. The plan was that the report drafted by Stratus be submitted directly to the Ecuadorian court by Mr. Cabrera. Was it agreed that Stratus would draft the report in a form that it could be submitted directly to the Ecuadorian court by Mr. Cabrera? I don't have a specific recollection, but I think that was the general idea. And that is exactly what happened. Stratus Consulting ghostwrote the Cabrera report in English, a language Cabrera does not speak, with the opening line, This report was written by Richard Cabrera, ING, to provide expert technical assistance to the court in the case of Maria Aguinda y Otros versus Chevron Texaco Corporation. Shortly before the report was to be filed, it was translated into Spanish. A forensic analysis of plaintiff's lawyer's computers revealed that on March 31, 2008, the day before the Cabrera report was filed, plaintiff's lawyers were putting the finishing touches on the report. The Cabrera report found on plaintiff's lawyer's computers matches word for word the $16 billion damage assessment filed by Cabrera the next day on April 1, 2008. The plaintiff's lawyers continued their fraud by employing Stratus to draft objections criticizing the Cabrera report as unjustly favorable to Chevron. Plaintiff's lawyers and Stratus then ghostwrote a second report in Cabrera's name, responding to their own criticisms and inflating the damages to over $27 billion. In all, Stratus was paid nearly $1 million to secretly draft Cabrera's report, criticize that report, and then respond to that criticism in Cabrera's name. Commenting on their deception, Stratus principal Douglas Beltman wrote, Oh, what a tangled web. Though independent scientists were repeatedly solicited by Stephen Donziger and Stratus to endorse the Cabrera report, none were willing to do so. So in December 2008, Stratus published its own public comments endorsing the report it had written for Cabrera. In its endorsement, Stratus trumpeted Cabrera's independence, knowing it to be false. Implementing Donziger's credo that if you repeat a lie a thousand times, it becomes the truth, from the moment Cabrera was appointed and for years thereafter, plaintiff's lawyers falsely proclaimed in filings, press releases, interviews, and testimony that Cabrera's, quote, independent investigation and reports proved their environmental contamination claims. Fajardo denied the plaintiff's relationship with Cabrera to the Ecuadorian court and stated publicly, Chevron's claim that Professor Cabrera is cooperating with the plaintiffs is completely false. Chevron is frightened by Cabrera precisely because he is an independent and credible expert. A few weeks later, Donziger falsely testified to a committee of the U.S. House of Representatives that Cabrera provided an independent estimate of the impact of contamination in Ecuador. 
At the same time Donziger was lying to Congress, plaintiff's lawyers were continuing to pay Cabrera hush money to address his dangerous discomfort, to keep him in line, and to calm him down. After reviewing this mountain of evidence of wrongdoing, one of the plaintiff's newly recruited U.S. lawyers concluded in a memo sent to fellow counsel that plaintiffs and Cabrera can be charged with a fraud and that Stratus was an active conspirator. In the spring of 2010, as evidence of the Cabrera fraud was being uncovered in U.S. courts, plaintiff's Ecuadorian lawyer Julio Prieto made a shocking admission of wrongdoing as he warned his colleagues that, apart from destroying the proceeding, all of us, your attorneys, might go to jail. And in a discovery proceeding brought by Chevron against Stratus, at least two of the U.S. law firms representing plaintiffs withdrew from the case, citing ethical reasons. With their case crumbling, the plaintiffs' lawyers scrambled to devise a cover-up. They decided to try and cleanse the record by laundering the Cabrera Report's conclusions through the mouths of six new experts. Under oath, Stephen Donziger admitted that none of the new experts ever visited Ecuador or did any kind of new site inspection, new sampling, or environmental testing of any kind. And the new experts admitted when deposed that they relied on the data and conclusions in the discredited Cabrera report and did not conduct any independent analysis or form any opinions that Texpet had caused any damage in the Ecuadorian Oriente. We're not offering the opinion that Chevron took any action that actually caused anybody to get cancer, correct? Uh, no, I'm not. And you're not offering the opinion that TextPet took any action that actually caused anybody to get cancer, correct? No, I'm not. Presented with evidence of the Cabrera and cleansing expert frauds, courts across the United States have concluded that the plaintiff's Ecuador litigation is a massive fraud. Reflecting the views of courts across the country, the U.S. District Court for the Western District of North Carolina wrote, while this court is unfamiliar with the practices of the Ecuadorian judicial system, the court must believe that the concept of fraud is universal and that what has blatantly occurred in this matter would, in fact, be considered fraud by any court. The Ecuadorian court, however, swept aside the undeniable evidence of fraud and issued an $18 billion judgment, later proven ghostwritten by the plaintiff's lawyers. Based on the same evidence of fraud ignored by the Ecuadorian court, an international treaty arbitration tribunal ordered the Republic of Ecuador to take all measures at its disposal to suspend or cause to be suspended the enforcement or recognition of the Ecuadorian judgment.